I, I do construction and photography, so I actually started my day doing construction and then uh, finished it with a photo shoot and now an interview. Oh, nice. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, uh, you, you were saying something about uh, photography earlier, so I was like, oh, I didn't even know that you did photography. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, I was doing it for like the last eight years in L.A., and then pandemic hit, and uh, then we had to pivot and move back yeah. to Minneapolis. Okay, Minneapolis. All right, cool. I have a few. Um, I have a few people I know out there. Okay. Back when I was, um, so I still am a practitioner of functional patterns. However, I just don't train other people. So when I was a biomechanics trainer, uh, a few of my uh, colleagues are out in Minneapolis. Biomechanics. Yeah, biomechanics. So like, um, really, just um, how the body moves. I train people, mostly athletes or like trainers who train other people. Um, just you know helping with basically getting people to perform without pain okay yeah yeah good thing uh, <laughs> okay uh, all right everyone I'm also a dancer so oh you're a dancer okay yeah. shoot, me too let's go yeah, yeah. So that, that's kind of dope <laughs> i love that i love creatives because you know it's like a lot of people know me for the business side of things however i'm actually a creative i consider myself to be an artist you know business is just one of those expressions that I enjoy a lot because I see that we need it, especially as artists. We oftentimes we get taken advantage of, so. For sure. Yeah. Especially um, dancers. <laughs> yeah, for real. All day. Yeah. I remember uh, fighting all the battles of um, dancers, like how much to get paid. And yeah. Uh, you're getting mad at certain dancers for not taking, you know, for taking so little pay. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and just not knowing that, you know, you are your brand, so you should be incorporated, you know, no matter what kind of artist you are, you should be registered, and you should be using that when you're signing contracts, not just yourself, you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. That's a, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not business savvy. That's a, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> and we can definitely have that. And, and most artists are not, because we focus more on the, the passion and, mm -hmm. you know, just the art itself, however, like, then we get taken advantage of because we're not thinking about the business part of it, or we're not able to leverage the business part of it as much as we can. Right. You know? So financing what we choose to do and all that kind of stuff, it, it really is important, so. For sure. All right. Okay, everyone, so I just wanna say, before we get started, before I introduce my guest today, I would like to just do with disclaimers. I do these disclaimers in the beginning because Number one, I want people to understand why I'm doing these videos. It's like, it's been over seven now, even though this is episode five. Okay. However, my goal is not to change anybody from wanting to be vegan or being vegan or nothing like that. I honestly do not care what you choose to do with your body. I don't care. However, because I promoted it and because I was a huge influencer in that space, um, during my time, I do think that it is, it, it's just a part of my character to be able to say, hey, I was wrong and this is what I experienced rather than just, just not telling anybody and just choosing to do something different. You know, I think that's dangerous and a lot of people do that, but I don't want to be that person. No, so I, two I agree with that. Yeah. To be wholeheartedly 100%, you know, I feel this, I feel very, feel very much the same way with yeah. me and, and whoever I may have influence to eat whatever way in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And um, it's a lot of people who myself and my friend Karen have contacted, and these are like really heavy influencers in the vegan space, but they, they're not vegan, you know what I mean? And, and they had to stop because of health issues, but they don't tell people that, they still promote it. And, and so just to be that voice on the other side, because people are having real issues. So mm -hmm. um, two things, number one, the thing that I learned, two things that I learned the most, the most important, within my journey is number one, you do not need to be vegan to be healthy, which is what a lot of people promote and they push, yeah. you know, trying to cure different diseases and all those things. Um, and then number two, you do not need to be vegan to be spiritual. That is not necessary. Right. So um, now we can go ahead and get into the show. Uh, just, and I just had to do that because it's, it's so many people that hit me up and they're like, why are you going against veganism? And I've had, on my YouTube channel, all kind of comments. And I'm just like, number one, because I personally don't think it's for humans. And then second, because I haven't seen anybody as a trainer, like 
you have a lot of people who are chefs who are nutritionists and things like that but if you don't actually implement your if you don't actually like exert your body to do physical force you won't really know what you can and cannot do because you're not doing anything to really show whether you have the power from your food or not you know what i mean that's the test it's funny i've never thought about it from that angle yeah you, you don't and so as a biomechanics trainer as somebody who didn't just take pictures, but I actually have my clients in video, in motion, showing the difference of their body. You can literally see the difference between a vegan and a person who's not vegan. It's like literally clear as day. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so, okay. So I have a wonderful guest here. I'm really excited. Um, I I came across this man because I was, I was talking junk on somebody's platform. <laughs> Both of us were. <laughs> <laughs> and, he was just giving his testimony. He had like this long thing and I read it and I was just like, oh my God. And this was like when I really started like, like my, I was new to not being vegan and I was just reading okay. what he was saying and I was like, oh shoot. You know what I mean? Cause I, I still hadn't had that many people that I knew about who were That's having it. issues. I wasn't, yeah, I didn't, it's interesting to hear that you were kind of just getting there. Yeah. Yeah, like I was, um, <clears throat> I was at that point where I was so fed up, and I'm also like a, I'm like a major shit talker. I'm from New York, so I just okay. <laughs> and and you know it's like I come from tough love and yeah. all that, so I just was going in on whoever. I yeah, I but but then I remember I think the one that you commented on was something where I was just being I wasn't really talking my shit. I was just being mm -hmm. like honest. Yeah. You, know, you need to be in more form type of standpoint, you know. Yeah, yeah, and that's what really was just like, wow, you know what I mean? So um, I just wanted to give people that backdrop just because I did put a beacon out. It was like, if you want to give your story, you know, let me know. But this is not what that was. I really actually found him and was just like, you know, in awe, really, that he had all those experiences and was vegan for so long. So um, introduce yourself. Let us know who you are, what you do, and how long you were vegan. <clears throat> Um, my name is Adam Adolphus. I'm a dancer, photographer, general contractor, um, and uh, I was vegetarian and vegan, some form or another of that, off and on for 20 years. When I say off and on, I didn't eat animals at all for the past 20 years span, um, but I might have, when I was vegetarian, had, you know, like muffins that were cooked with eggs or... Um, <laughs> or uh, maybe I decided to have fish at some point or another. Um, but I, I went like a, it, it's crazy because it's such a long period of time, 20 years, um, that it, it was really just this long roller coaster ride of experimenting with my health. You know? Yeah, wow. So this is also the thing that I saw you comment and I was just like, I didn't know I was gonna be doing these videos, but I'm so thankful <laughs> that we connected because I think you are actually the person who, you are the only person that I've interviewed who's been vegan for 20, who were, who was vegan for and, and vegetarian for 20 years. Well, again, like I wasn't vegan for 20 years. I, I stopped eating animals 20 years ago. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, and, um, and like I said, when I first started, I was I was young, I was like, I was 21. And, um, and I, um, <clears throat> it was honestly, it was my 21st birthday, I was, uh, cigarette smoker at that point and I was um sitting in my apartment in Queens after the party was over and I was smoking a cigarette and I was thinking to myself how I gotta quit you know and I, and I got scared for a moment I was thinking damn like how many times have I said how many times have I said I quit and I and I haven't and then I was like oh shit God. like you're yes. addicted you know and um and that fear was enough to kind of scare me straight and so there was other things like being vegetarian in, that I was interested in, didn't know anything about, but I had friends who were doing it and these friends were people that I was to. Um, so at that moment, I kind of declared that I wasn't gonna smoke cigarettes, I wasn't gonna eat animals, I wasn't gonna drink milk. Um, I was gonna stop eating candy. And, um, and, and, and then I started, and that, that's literally when it all started, that's how it started. Um, and, and then it's just 20 years of a lot of different things that have happened over, over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. So you said that you, 
So my next question was, what made you go um, vegan? Sure. From being like, what made you? I know you just touched on it, but just touch on yeah. like, what made you be vegetarian, and then what made you go into veganism? Yeah. So I mean, honestly, the goal was vegan, but when I first started, not knowing anything about it, I was like, all right, well, I don't like animals that much anyway, so I can. It's easy for me to just stop eating that. Um, it wasn't like I was really paying too much attention to what I was eating. I just started paying attention to the things that I didn't want to eat. And that was animals and drinking milk or whatever and that I put into my head. I just believed that it was bad. I, you know, the common knowledge that I had always heard was vegetarians live longer. Yeah. You know, um, things like that, you know. Um, and so I just, and then a lot of the things that I was attracted to at that point in my life were in the direction too, so like monkey, monkey, monkey pressure type of a stand thing, you know. My brother also at some point went vegetarian before me, and so that was also like an influence. Um, and uh, and so yeah, so even, so, so again, the goal was only but me being and with my food addictions and my food issues, that was a long road ahead, you know a very long road ahead, you know. So I was probably vegetarian, unhealthy vegetarian for about 10 years. Um, before ten I, years. I, for like 10 years. And that's, you know, before I ever tried to, <clears throat> and I probably tried to go vegan for like a couple of months and then, and then cheated. And then I was back on the vegetarian trip and then probably tried to go vegan again for a couple of months and then cheated and then was vegetarian to but I never went back to eating animals. I just kept like vegetarianism was easy for me, but veganism was next to impossible. <clears throat> um then I'd say around year thirteen was when I got more serious and I was like, okay, I can do this. And and so I just started eating vegan. And um and I and I actually around year two I would say I, I to actually care to do a little bit more of the knowledge and I started to kind of just actually start watching what I was eating ultimately and ultimately try trying to eat better you know, altogether as well as being a vegan. <laughs> I thought I was eating better. Um, and, uh, and, I, and, you know, so that was probably, you know, I, I guess around like year 13 was when I started like being committed vegan. A few years forward, I started being like a just vegan. <laughs> <laughs> and that was when I was like talking all my shit on the internet, you know. Mm -hmm. what you should and what you shouldn't do. <laughs> Part of your diet. And, yeah. and I would hop into all of my DMs about, you know, whether if they were a hunter and they posted a picture of an animal they had killed. Or... Wait a second, your, your audio is going in and out a little bit. Um, okay, well... Let me, what would be the trick? It seems clear right now. Okay, so maybe it's because it's bouncing off of the thing over here. Let me prop you up on something. <clears throat> yeah, so, I got this propped up on my journal, so. <laughs> yeah, it's like, the, earlier today I was like, shit, how am I going to do this? I don't really have a, like a, a stage set up for this type okay. of shit, so. It's all good. So I didn't see if this helped create some space for the mic. Um, but let's see if it doesn't fall over first. <clears throat> That's perfect. Is that better? Yes. All right, let's try that for a little bit. Um, so yeah, so... Um, you were talking your shit because you were vegan? And... Yeah, yeah. So I started getting self-righteous and I would talk on my shit. And um, uh, it's crazy because when you're in it, you just... You're so in it, you don't yeah. realize who you've become, and and just the whole tone that you're giving off all the time. Um, it's really sad, but um, but yeah, I did that whole thing. And um, uh, long story short, it's, you know, there's the, the, the story of, of me being a vegetarian transferring into a vegan. There's really nothing to that. Um, but what happened when I became vegan? At first, because I, I, like when I started like juicing and and really trying to take in my greens and eat better, uh, 
at the beginning, I felt great, like everybody else. <clears throat> and um, I was dancing at the time, and I could, you know, I'd wake up and have like, I'd start off by juicing. And so I'd make like big, huge bowls of juice, okay? And I, and I would drink them all right away. Like, wow. like I, would, I would, I mean, I would drink liters of juice, you know, like first thing in the morning. And then, um, and then I would have a smoothie like an hour or two after that. Yeah. A fruit smoothie. And that was just in my head. I'm thinking, oh, I'm getting my my micronutrients from my juice, and then I'm gonna get my fiber and my my content from this smoothie that I'm gonna make, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I would do that, and it was crazy because I wouldn't have to eat till like six in the evening after doing that. Like mm -hmm. I could go all day some on that it was the weirdest thing and um and i would feel good i was i was practicing all the time with my dance and um, working and just whatever living my life um and i was doing that for a while it was crazy too because after like when i first started juicing i remember i had like the shits and the runs and i cleaned it up thoroughly mm -hmm. but then once i acclimated to it like that wasn't happening um i was definitely mm -hmm. peeing a lot but then um I remember as I would make my juice in the morning, my stomach would actually start growling like ferociously for the juice. And so I was thinking that like, oh, my body's finally getting what it needs and it needs this. And it was probably just starving and just growling for anything anyway. Um, yes. <laughs> you know, I had convinced myself that my stomach was growling and dry and I was thriving on this and I don't know. And then like, I mean, you know, it's probably my genetics as to how I look. And so I would assume that, oh, well, I'm, in my 30s, I've been eating like this since I was in my 20s, and mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm chilling. There's nothing anybody can tell me. I'm a dancer. I compete. You know, um, mm -hmm. some of the best dancers in the world. Like, what are you going to tell me about my health? Like, even though my teeth are, like, falling out of my, my, my skull and, and my energy level was, like, seemingly low, but I probably thought that was just from smoking too much trees or something, you know? Yeah. So then... Um, yeah, I don't know. Next question. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, you, you know, what made you go vegan and, uh, you know, vegetarian? However, like, my next one is, when did you realize that it wasn't working for you? And you just said that your teeth and your energy. So, so oftentimes, and I experienced this as well, and this is, like, everybody that I know, basically, that went vegan. In the beginning, whether it's, like, the first, I'm going to say one to four years, Really, you see the difference in the first like year or so because your body is transitioning. I think it's However, different for everybody depending to what level of commitment you are to the vegan yeah. diet, and then as yeah. well as what you're actually eating, right? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Also, it's like, both. also, I think how how good did you eat prior to being a vegan? If right. you had a if you had a fantastic diet up until that point where you decided to do that, you can go vegan for for a long fucking time. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. before you know it. Like, I mean. Like I said, like I was vegetarian for you know thirteen years before I decided to commit to being vegan. So I was already depleted, mm -hmm. and I still was able to stretch it and keep going and keep going. It, it literally wasn't until I was thirty-seven that I noticed something was wasn't. Uh, that's amazing. From Twenty-one to thirty-seven before I noticed anything, aside yeah. from my teeth. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I wanted to go into because. Like, for me, it was within the first year. And, and I ate, I mean, I had home-cooked meals. I didn't grow up eating trash or anything like that. Okay. Um, and then I cooked for myself when I was in college. And I, you know, so I didn't grow up eating terribly at all. However, I am a woman, too. And so our mm -hmm. our bodies are different. And, oh, yeah. you know, I'm bleeding every month. So right. <laughs> that, that plays into it. However. Um, Hormones. Exactly, right? So you have that same that same step of where it's like in the beginning you do feel great you feel a difference you feel amazing but then like you said like your teeth so tell us about like what was going on with your teeth okay so um a little bit more back history for me um i wasn't breastfed okay um and so from birth my diet was incorrect okay. all right so from the moment i was born i was given formula and um, so right away, my teeth are already suffering. My, my whole physiology is already suffering, right? Mm -hmm. Then um, after that, and I'm able to eat solid foods, my parents weren't good with diets. So my diet, their diet was as a, as a baby, right? 
possibly worse than their diet was because parents are lazy. You know, like you get tired. I have to call my parents lazy, but you know, they, they get yeah. tired and they, um, you know, they. I, I can see maybe my dad and uncle Mark like eating a bunch of meat. You know what I mean? Because he's like a raw, raw guy. And so I can see him like getting his nutrients, and being like, yeah, like you know, feed the kids some, feed the kids some fish, or, you know, feed the kids whatever. Yeah. So um. And then I, I remember from a very early age having like bowls of cereal and there being like this sugar dish in this table where you could have like Cheerios that are unsweetened but then put the bread you wanted in it. Mm -hmm. And then like I'd be like drinking the milk and scooping the sugar out, winning mm -hmm. it. So I was probably like nine, I think, when I went to the dentist for the first time mm -hmm. with like a crazy. And the dentist said I had nine cavities. Okay. And I remember when I went back to the dentist around, I'd say like 12, mm -hmm. I had a root canal. And I remember the dentist looking at my dad or my mom or both of them, why the fuck did you have a root canal already? Yeah. Like giving him that look like he's 12, he should not be having this type of procedure. Right. And so at that point, my diet was like, it was candy. Like, I, I mean, any any amount of money I would get, I'd go to 7-Eleven and get those little five cent candy. And I'd fill up the whole bag. You know, if I had a dollar, that's 20 pieces of candy. If I had two dollars, that's 40 pieces of candy. And I, and I was candy, you know? Mm. So that was like the beginning of like me having bad teeth. So it was just from like, from jump, you know? Like, I felt like I was born with that. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and then when I'm 21, I decided to become a vegetarian mm -hmm. and then starve myself of all the nutrients that I need, especially the type of nutrients that hardens and strengthens your teeth. Yeah. All at the same time, I'm still eating pastries galore, right? The whole time I was vegetarian, I'm eating pizza and pastries galore. I never let go of cheese because I was like, I'm in New York. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not giving up pizza. Like, what? Yeah. No, I'm eating my pizza. Yeah. What's crazy is like the pizza, whatever little eggs I would eat and have. Mm -hmm. And um, and then there was a moment where, at like, I, when was that? I was probably like, when I was like 10 years in, I started fishing with one of my best friends here in Minnesota. And we would go fishing every day after work. And all the fish we would catch, I would let, he would bring home to his family and feed his family. And I would go over there and I would have like, they were Asian, so it was like a lot of white fish to fish. But I would have some rice and whatever veggies were there, but I wouldn't eat the fish that I was catching. Mm -hmm. And that was the first year. By the second year, I was doing this with them. I was like starting to get weak in the knees because of the smell of fish, you know? And so I remember yeah. being like, all right, I'm going to go pescatarian, right? Mm -hmm. And so that summer, I ate all the fish that I caught, mm -hmm. okay? And so that, that was actually two summers in a row that I ate all the fish that I caught, but only in summer. As soon as I was done fishing, I wasn't, if I didn't catch it, I wasn't eating it. That was like my mentality. Yeah. I was like, I can eat this fish, I can eat it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think like these little, like eating pizza and getting that cheese protein, right? And mm -hmm. that dairy protein and then having, you know, even pastries that are cooked with eggs or mm -hmm. even occasionally, if I was in New York visiting, I would, have, I would go to the bodega and I would get an egg sandwich all day, right? And mm -hmm. I was like, that, that was like a cheat I would allow myself. All of these cheats I think are what allowed me to go so long yeah. eating this poor way, you know? Yes. But then when I finally committed to being a vegan, mm -hmm. you know, it's like you said, after a certain amount of time, you know, like, it's just you hit a brick wall, you know? And yeah. my brick wall was like a real deal, serious brick wall. Yeah. And, um, and what happened was I was, uh, I was driving home from a road trip. We, we do a lot of traveling, camping and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I'm on my way home with my, with my girl at the time and, uh, and our two dogs. And I'm holding one of them in my hand while, while I'm driving the whole time. And it's like five hour drive, you know? So I got my car in my hand for like a good hour and then I switch hands and now I'm driving. And ever since I switched hands, I felt like this pain in my wrist. Mm. And I was like, what the hell? Like, and I'm thinking like, how's my wrist sprain? I'm just holding my little five pound Pomeranian, you know? Yeah. We get home, my wrist still hurts. I wake mm. up the next morning, my wrist still hurts. Uh, maybe 48 hours later, the wrist pain goes away. A week later, I randomly get a, the identical pain in this wrist. Mm. And I'm like, okay. Two days later, it goes 
worst way. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, I get another random pain in my shoulder. But I'm a dancer, so it's like, I don't know if these dance, and I, and I break dance, I'm, I'm like hip hop. So it's like, so I don't know if these pains are from like, you know, I have an AC separation on one shoulder. Mm -hmm. Who knows if I have a corn rotator cuff on another? You know, like, I'm a, I'm a dance, I break, you know, so it's like, so I'm like, okay, maybe my shoulder hurts from practice from a few days ago. But a lot of these pains that I was getting were coming seemingly out of it wasn't like, oh, I did something at practice and now my research. It was, it was I, I was about to go to sleep and right before I went to bed, my shoulder started to throb. Mm. Um, so this is, so I'm, eight, so I'm 37 when this happened. And um, interestingly enough, uh, this was the year that me and my wife decided to have a baby. And it was also the same year that my mom uh, was extremely ill and we thought she was gonna die. She had to go to uh, the and get on a donor list for a new living. Okay. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting because I feel like, you know, they say stress kills. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's for me, when I try to figure out everything in my head, I, I think that the, the stress of the idea of creating life and then the fact that my mom now is in the hospital and me and my brother are, are, are caretakers while she goes through this whole process. Um, I think that stress was like the, the tipping of the iceberg that kind of pushed my body over the edge mm. and started basically having me have this autoimmune. Um, since that time, I, I haven't danced. Oh, wow. To this day. So it's been like four years since I've been able to dance. Mm -hmm. And, um, and now it's like, I, I know the answers to getting rid of what I'm dealing with, but now I'm also food addiction for a lifetime. Yeah. And the addiction of sugar, which is a motherfucker, you know, like is, uh, you know, I feel like, I, I mean, it's interesting because when I think about all the, the disease, it's, yeah, I'm like, this must be, the hardest addiction to take over every drug that exists because mm -hmm. everybody and nobody's talking about it because nobody yeah. wants to quit yeah and and you know I, and, and you're you were talking about these and you kind of cut out you were talking about veganism yeah yeah and and i agree because like you said it's because nobody talks about what they experience on a vegan diet and oftentimes it's explained away whether oh you're just detoxing and that's why you feel like that or you know um well if you're talking to a vegan they'll just tell you you didn't do it yeah right right it's like you know so it's kind of like healthcare workers haven't gotten vaccinated yet yeah mm -hmm. yesterday they were heroes they today they're your enemy right and so mm -hmm. yesterday we were, we were on the same side when i was a vegan but i decided not to be we're, we're enemies right Right. No, we're not enemies, man. Like, we're all going yeah. through the same struggle. We all took in the same misinformation and believed it. Yeah. And most of us got very dogmatic about it. Most of us got very religious about it. Mm -hmm. And I say religious because there's no facts in it, right? It's not true, right? Mm -hmm. But you believed in it. You had faith in it. Yep. Totally. To a point where you're like, oh, it, it can cure anything, you know? And, and I think that's where it becomes very dangerous as well, because a lot of the people that people follow when they go vegan, number one, do not have any type of real like background that you can really, I mean, th these are self-proclaimed doctors. These are not people who have real clients. Self-proclaimed nutritionists who know nothing about nutrition. Yes, who know nothing about nutrition. Who and, and the thing is, is that when it comes to like life, I always ask midwives, hey, what do you recommend to a pregnant woman? Not a doula. Right. Because a lot of people don't understand that doulas are not trained in order to give nutritional advice to pregnant women. Right. Well, they are there for support. My wife's a doula. Yeah. And we have yes. yes. You know, they are there for support. They are there to... Um, advocate for the pregnant woman. However, the midwife is the one that is trained to actually catch the to catch the baby. Has the you know all of the tools and everything. Is that that, yes. Yeah. No, it's one hundred percent correct. You know, um, and and, uh, and and it's it's really good what you're saying as far as 
you know, what would be the second woman, right? Like, what would be the one person who's about to create life, right? Like, this is, this is the opposite of death right now, right? So, yes. so yeah, like. Yeah, and it's like, I had, I had, uh, um, excuse me, a midwife on, and she literally flat out told me, she was just like, yeah, I mean, and she worked with indigenous cultures in Mexico and things like that. And it's just like, no, they're feeding organ meats. They're eating meat. You know, it's balanced with like cooked uh, vegetables and fermented vegetables. They really don't do raw like that nope. because it's so hard to break down. Nope. However, it's a balanced meal. It's not just a vegan diet. And they really don't promote a vegan diet like that because you have to be so scientific. And it, it really pisses me off when people be like, oh, well, you know, you can be, um, you know, pregnant or whatever and, and, and do all these things. And it's like the way that the kind of scientific uh, scientists you have to be in order to make sure you get in everything, honestly, is so stressful. And if you have to do all that, that just goes to show it's not natural, number one. Like, I should be able to, if, if everything shut down, like because of COVID or whatever, everybody would no longer, people who are vegan would no longer be vegan because well, you <laughs> cannot be vegan and be funny. natural. So I'll tell you the story of what, like, how I got back on the road to eating animals, right? Yes, please. Yeah, so, um, so I was in, so all those pains I talked about, they, be, they started coming closer and closer in succession to the point where I was literally in pain every day, mm. only in a different joint every day. And the pain was so severe that I, would, I couldn't even, like, it was interesting, too. The pain would come on at night. So I literally, it would start like right after dinner time i say maybe nine o'clock ish mm -hmm. and it wouldn't start going away till nine in the morning and um and it, it was you know or like till sun up or something it was and it was miserable it was like literally every night right before i like right when i start getting tired ready to start crashing a joint would start to throb and i would start having and like literally like i don't know if you've ever had a toothache but imagine have you ever had one toothache? slightly yes <laughs> nothing to where it's like oh my god oh wow that's great that's good that means you're very healthy um <laughs> but um so i'm just trying to think of a, of a pain that you could imagine that's very because a, a severe two things like probably the most painful thing i've ever experienced mm -hmm. um so i guess the only thing i could you know, be like maybe some, similar to having a migraine or something i don't know either way um it, the pain would be like it feel like a knife was in your joint somebody was twisting and not letting up for hours you know yeah. um and then ah. it was weird come morning time i would slowly like start dozing off because i was like up all night in pain mm -hmm. and and then my it would I, I would feel like the sensation slowly, slowly start to subside and leave my body mm -hmm. and then i would fall out for a hours in the morning sleep in a little bit and wake up and do my day like a zombie and that went on for like two years straight and then throughout those two years I was like going down the vegan rabbit hole because I was in all this pain and I was like oh I'm not it's because of all the times I cheated and, and it's because I'm not doing it right enough or because of this or because of that and, and I need to try this person's vegan diet and now I need to go to Dr. Sebi and try his diet he actually had to stop his office he's literally walking from my house in LA I walked in there to get advice. I, I actually, and I was really mad because he had passed away during all this time when I was in pain. And then afterwards, I was, when I realized, when I started looking up uh, more of his info, I realized that he had gotten a block from me where his office was. So I went there to get like pamphlets and information. And then I started going down that rabbit hole and trying to eat out the line. And, um, and you know, he had like his little tiny list of like 40 items that you could eat. Yeah. So all the while I was pain, I'm also losing weight like crazy. Yeah. I've been 155 my whole life and um, like since high school, you know, and uh, I'm still that same today. But at this point I had gotten down to like 140. And, um, and that, that was like when I was doing like this whole Dr. Sebi bullshit. Um, mm -hmm. And also when I was in the most pain of my life. And then at this time, my guilty pleasure on television is alone, naked and afraid, and any of the Bible shows that exist. <laughs> and so, I, so I'm watching one of these episodes where finally there's like this guy on the show who is a good hunter and he's successfully killing animals and he's successfully surviving and he's not 
losing weight, actually thriving in nature, butt naked, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like super impressed. I was like, holy shit. When you think of we were naked. Mm -hmm. So this was, this show was very fascinating to me, even though it was corny at the same time, but the same, you know, I was like, it's corny, but they're actually naked and they're in the wild and they're trying to survive right now. So yeah. pay attention. Right. And so this one guy, he's like, he's, he's killing. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And I'm, in, in my, I'm on the couch, I'm in pain. I'm like, I'm dying in pain. Mm. And I remember thinking, like, everything that this guy's doing, if I was in a survival situation like that, that's what I would do. Yeah. And it was like this epiphany, you know, like, comes over my whole body where I'm like, everything you do to survive is what you would do mm -hmm. while you're on your couch surviving. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I don't know, it was very profound thought for me. And... And I've always told everybody, I was never like a, I was never a, um, an ethical vegan. I never was it, um, specifically for the animal. I didn't want the, the, um, the blood on my and the torture on my mm -hmm. um, But, um, you know, uh, where they going with this? So, but, I, but I've always known that, like, you know, if I was in some situation where I was a plane crash and I survived, and I'm, jungle, I'm killing the first rabbit I see. You know? yeah. um, and I've always had that mentality. So here I am watching the show and knowing that I have that mentality and it scared the shit out of me because yeah. I was like, if I was on in a at the survival situation, like this is in fact what I would do. Yeah. And then I started to think, well then like what place does veganism have in this equation? You yeah. know? And I started to truly like really started to think about it and I was like and I was like, damn, son, like, even if you had a bag of seeds when you landed on that, what are you going to plant and starve for six months until until they harvest? Right. Right? Like, because you got to wait all summer to mm -hmm. harvest. Right? So what the fuck are you going to do? With and I was like, and then I started to think, like, okay, so do you think that if you're Tom Hanks on Castaway, do you think you're going to support two things? Do you think you're going to be eating all the Right. You think you're going to have heart disease, eating all the other animal food. Maybe mm -hmm. a coconut now and again. Maybe yeah. there's other random fruit tree on that island. You know? Yeah. And I'm mm -hmm. like, but that's not what you're going to be eating. You eat yeah. fish, crabs, and whatever animals you can get. Right. And then, and then I did like, so it was weird for like two months straight. Like, I think from that very moment, I knew. Mm -hmm. It's gonna happen, but it's like a lot of reading, a lot of podcasting, mm -hmm. a lot of watching interviews of everything that I would normally shun. Yeah. Everything that I would normally ignore as some bullshit, I was now like listening to. And I was in pain all night long anyway. I, I, could yeah. hurt. I had all the time in the world to just take in and for So for two months straight, I just went down the rabbit hole of like animals and eating mm -hmm. it and the philosophy and the beliefs behind it and just all that. Yeah. And when it was all said and done, I knew it was going to happen. I just was like waiting to like build the courage up to get it out of my head that this was mm -hmm. broke or that whatever, you know. And, and I also had learned about like elimination diets to figure out what's bothering you, right? Yes, yeah, sir. I was like, but I'm a vegan. I'm also, I'm a Dr. Sevy vegan at this point. So I'm thinking like, what else can I eliminate? I'm 140 pounds, I'll fucking die, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so then I was like, wait a second, like you ate animals from zero to 21 and then you just stopped. Mm -hmm. Nothing was wrong with you, mm -hmm. eat from eating candy, not from eating animals, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I was like, it's not gonna kill you to eat animals for a week straight, yeah, right? And not eat anything. And see what happened. And I was in such pain that I actually could do it. I really finally, like, I hit my boy up. I was like, I was like, Yo, mom, I'm ready to eat burger. Like, let's go, you know? Yeah. Picks me up right away. We, we go to Del Campo in LA, like a like this, you know, organic, free range, pasture raised whole thing, mm -hmm. farm to table burger joint. Of course, I had to do my what animals I was going to eat now. Of course, same. Yeah. I could just eat any animal. Right? Of course. <laughs> so then I go there and I, and I get this fucking massive lamb burger and, and, I, and I start eating it, right? And it's so big, it was like, 
It was bigger than a quarter pound. It was small than a half pound. It was fucking huge. Yeah. So, um, and I remember when I had like maybe four bites left, I was starting to get like slightly turned off because I was eating so much. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I can't wait the animals. I force fed myself. And then as I'm driving home from, from the spot, I was literally having hot flash. I'm not even joking, right? And it's crazy because um, one of the other rabbit holes that I went down during those two months that I was working myself up to eating animals was I had discovered the ex-vegan. I never heard of an ex-vegan. And then Thanks. learning about all this shit and the, and the video, inside, I see something that says ex-vegan, like testimonial. And I click on it. And then it was a wrap. Like, I must have watched a hundred ex-vegan. <laughs> yes. And like I was getting, I would get goosebumps on like every other one that I watched because they would say something that struck nerve, and, and it was like they were like talking about their symptoms, and I, I didn't know I had these symptoms. Like, yeah, I had been living like this for so long, mm-hmm. and I smoke herbs every day, and a lot of it that like you don't fucking know what you're, you just don't know. You're in this fucking cloud of shit, you know. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, it was intense. Like I started. You know, and so like I started hearing all these vegans talk about how they're cold, how they're cold to the bone, and I was like, I'm always cold. And I live in LA. It's yeah. Hot here. And I'm cold. Like, I mean, I was probably also like pre-diabetic or diabetic. I don't fucking know because I don't go to the doctor to get checked up. You know. And so it's like, anyway. So yeah, like. That was like what led me to finally eating animals, and it was fascinating that I ate my first piece of beef for 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 lamb. And as I'm driving home, I'm having hot flashes, the opposite of feeling cold, like literally like having to like take a layer off. As I'm yeah, eating. yeah, yeah. And no, I didn't have any stomach issues from eating the burger. No, I didn't have any digestive issues. No, I didn't get the runs. No, I didn't get sick. No, I didn't feel nauseous. None of that shit that I thought was going to happen after, you know, because I've always wondered after going so many years, oh, I wonder what would happen if I had a burger right now. Oh, I wonder what would happen if I ate a steak. Oh, I wonder if I would get sick. I'd probably have the runs and all this dumb shit that I was saying, you know? Like, so then after eating that burger and nothing bad happening, I was like, all right, it's time. And then I decided to go you know, as long as I could without mm-hmm. eating anything but animals, right? Mm-hmm. So I, uh, and, and I was going to do like, you know, like lettuce wrap burgers because I didn't want to even eat the bread, right? So I was, so that's what I was doing. So I like, you know, would wake up and I'd get breakfast and then come lunchtime I'd go and I'd go to the burger spot and I'd get a lettuce wrap burger. And then I, I they, they also had like a little meat market at the spot and I'd go and grab like a little steak and bring it home and then I'd eat that later for dinner. And I did that for two days straight, right? And it's just the craziest shit. Within just like 36 to maybe 40 hours of doing this, it turned my pain off like a light switch. And I'm talking after two years straight of being in dire, like, like it was literally because it was that, or I was going to go to the hospital next and, and have them tell me that I got rheumatoid arthritis and then start taking meds. Because it was like, I took the pain, like, I don't take any meds, I don't take any Advil or anything. So this whole time for two years straight that I'm dealing with the severe pain, I'm dealing with the severe pain. I'm not, yeah. you know, my, my, my wife is like all night, like, she doesn't deal with pain. She'll take a, a you know, Advil real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she gets cramps Advil, like she ain't playing around with her little yeah. head. She ain't fucking around. So she's like looking at me like anything I can do, but I'm like crying in the car. It's like, no, just go back to sleep, you know? Yeah. Like, okay. And so, um, yeah, like it literally turned me like the lights. And so then I had most of my answers, but I still had this food addiction that, that I still have today, that I literally still have today, four years ago. And now I'm, I'm so slick that I've managed to, to have just enough pain to get by. So that I cheat. Well, one more time you cut out there. You said you had you managed to what now? I managed to. I have like just enough pain in my body, but yet not in, like like I have enough pain, but I don't like I don't stop eating the shit I'm not supposed to be eating. Yeah. And then like I'll take two days off, get rid of whatever pain I have in my body, and then I go and fuck up again. And it's like this cycle that I repeat over and over and over. And this is the reason why I haven't danced in four years. And it really sucks because I think in my head, like, damn, son, like, you love this pastry more than you love your dance. 
I feel you. Okay, I see what you're saying. So you're like, okay, so you were saying like the food addiction after the, you know, like I have the knowledge now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, it's like I'm I'm beyond that. Like I I don't know if you know about the gas diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like that's where I'm at. Like if I do gas <laughs> diet, I'll I'll be sure and I'll I'll be fine. But again, like that means not cheating. Yeah, it does. And 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 it's like next to impossible. It is. No, you know, um, you spoke on something very important there because when uh, a lot of times people and I speak about this in my book, The Vegan Trap, it's link is in the bio. I speak about this in my book, The Vegan Trap. One of the things um, during the transition space that I talk about is post veganism and it's the habits that you pick up during veganism that you don't realize are associated with nutrient deficiency. However, you pick those up and that one of those is snacking all the time. You're constantly eating, constantly thinking about food. You literally <laughs> become addicted to food. So you know? true. Yeah. And it's like when you stop, when you first get satiation, I know for me, when I first, I ate the first uh, meat, like red meat that I ate was, was lamb as well. I made a lamb burger from my halal. Um, awesome. it, was the, oh, it was amazing. And I had the same thing. It literally felt like my blood just like boosted in my body. And I just felt this warmth, like all over my hands, just, Fucking just crazy. pouring through me. You know, that's why I'm, that's why I say no matter who tells me veganism works, whatever. Okay, fine. If you think it works for you, but you're not a real scientist. If you haven't gone vegan and then like ate meat again, ate quality meat again to really test and see how you feel and all these theories that we think, because when I stopped being vegan, I ate that meat and that salmon for the first time. It was just like satiation. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't hungry. I wasn't. Think I was thinking about food more so because they have it, but I wasn't hungry. I was like, I was good, you know. And for the first time in six years, I was just like, whoa, I'm not even checking for food like that. Like, I'm actually able to work now. I'm actually able to do other things and not be so focused on what I'm going to eat. So I'm glad you touched on that because it's something that a lot of people don't know when you're not vegan anymore. Uh, one of the things is like, you have to deal with food addiction. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's the motherfucker of them all, you know, like, yeah. and nobody wants to talk about it, you know, and um, it, it's, it's funny because it's one of the one things that I feel like aren't touched on when people talk about their ex veganism, you know, and I'm like, in my head, I'm tripping, like, I mean, I, I get it. Like some of you were not, did not have the most fucked up dietary upbringing that I had, right? Like some of you were actually healthy prior to being a vegan. So it was easy to be healthy after, you know, um, even when I think about Ivy, my wife, she, you know, I, I, I can tell that she ate better than me growing up, you know, and, um, and, and she's healthier for it now. You know what I mean? Like she hopped on my vegetarian bandwagon when we were dating and whatnot. She went from eating animals. And then as we started dating, she started doing more like I was doing. Um, and she, she was fine all the way up until we had our baby, you know? And, um, and it's, it. <laughs> well, it's crazy. Our midwife was just like you were saying, our midwife mm -hmm. was begging us to eat animals. Thank you. Begging us to eat animals, you know? Mind you, it's like, I'm sure my midwife was vegan at some point in her life. I'm sure she probably went down that rabbit hole. Maybe she did or didn't, but she was the type that maybe would have, you know? And if she didn't, it was just because she was fucking educated past that point and, and didn't fall for it. Um, yeah. You know, but um, but yeah, like she was, um, she convinced Ivy to take liver pills because she just, she was like, you got to do something like you're, like and and I remember it's funny because when we interviewed all of the midwives, we interviewed like three of them, and the first one was when we went with. And I remember we all vibed really well together. Like the energy was right, and um, like the energy was extremely right. And I remember the only thing that I had a screw face about was the fact that she wasn't a vegan and the mm -hmm. fact that she was definitely in the interview like talked about diet and then found out we were vegetarians and then I, she was concerned you know and then wow. I was concerned because I didn't I wasn't buying her bullshit or whatever you mm -hmm. know um or at least what I thought was bullshit yeah. she even made us bone broth at one point 
Um, and like, she was like, if I make it for you, will you guys drink it? And, and I was like, no. And I was like, all right, I'll do that. You know, like, so then I take the bone broth. Um, but yeah, um, it's crazy. So Ivy, she, she wasn't vegan. She was just vegetarian. Um, she never was vegan, but it's crazy. Cause when you're growing a baby and when you are, um, nursing a baby you know the way the body's designed is that the baby's gonna be fine you're going to suffer yes. you know and it's the same thing like you know like it's funny because um yeah anyway so so yeah so she um so one day we were at this wedding and she's nursing in the in the hot sun my daughter's probably five or six months old and um and Ivy was like, had a headache that day. And as the sun was beating down and she's nursing, she's getting more of a headache. So I tell her to go sit down inside. So she sits down inside. Then the whole wedding party goes inside. Now we're sitting on the table. And she's like, I just don't feel good. I feel off. And I was like, okay, well, let me know how bad it gets. If, if we need to go home, we'll go home. Whatever. I'm, I'm, I don't need to be here, you know? Yeah. And like maybe two or three minutes later, somebody was like talking to her and I could just tell that she was like in her head, not really paying attention to what they were saying because she was having a headache or something. Yeah. And then after she stopped talking to that person, I'm like, do we need to go? And she was like, yeah, we should go. And so we get in the car, we start driving home and I shit you not, I thought she was having a stroke. Wow. She literally like as we're getting closer to our exit, we were only about maybe 15 minutes from our house. So after we get into our exit, she's like holding her head and her head hurts. And she just keeps saying my head hurts. And, and now she's like saying that she's dizzy. And then it's getting to the point where she's not saying much. And, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, and, and so the, like at my exit, there's a hospital at our exit, you know? And mm -hmm. so we're at the exit and I'm looking at the hospital on the right and I'm looking at the light straight ahead and I'm thinking, do I go through this light or do I need to go to the hospital right now? Like, what's going on, you know? Yeah. And I asked, I'm like, do we need to go to the hospital? And she literally wasn't answering me. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we're going to the hospital. So then I just yeah. I hook a U-turn and go right into the fucking emergency room. I bring her in there. Now we got to fill out the paperwork. She couldn't fill out the paperwork. So mm -hmm. I'm having to fill out the paperwork. I'm like, yo, what's your social? And she's like this. Um, and she literally couldn't answer me. And I'm like, so then I go back to give the guy the paperwork unfinished. And he's like, why isn't it finished? I'm like, because she can't finish it right now. Like, what's wrong with her? That's what's wrong with her. You're like, yeah. she's not coherent right now. You know, fact, almost, com almost completely incoherent at this point. So then they finally come out, they check her out. And she's literally like, now she's like getting to this point where she's like, she's breathing and upright, but she's like unresponsive. She can't, like, it looks like she's staring at a ghost when she looks at you. Like she's looking forward, but it's almost like she's blind. Yeah. So then... Um, I, I grab Lyra, where they, they put her in a wheelchair, they start rolling her in. As they're rolling her in, I put Lyra in her, in her arms and I pull her boob out and I start having Lyra nurse because I don't know how long she's about to be away from her mom at this point and the only yeah. Lyra's food source is her mother at this point. Yes. And I'm like a new dad panicking, you know? And so then they bring her in and they just start running all these tests on her. And at some point she has like projectile vomit and they have to like strip her down naked in the emergency room. And, um, and she's just like not there. And we're in there for hours. They're doing blood work, spinal tap, um, like everything. Like they were like, what, you know, what drug is she on, Adam? Like, stop lying to us. What drug is she on? And I'm like, Jesus Christ, she's a nursing mom. She's not on any fucking drugs, you know? Yeah. Ivy's just a stoner like I am. And she, she didn't smoke the entire pregnancy. And yeah. then afterwards, she didn't smoke. She wasn't ready to go back into smoking yet. She was just dead serious about having a healthy child. And so, <laughs> and so then um, so at some point, like she's not coming to and I and it's hour and now it's like, you know, it's two hours past Lyra's bedtime at this point, you know, I got this baby and and my wife's like like I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I was losing her or not. And I'm calling you know, I'm calling people. I only have one sibling in LA at this point and he's not answering his phone with my brother. So then I call my best friend David and then he he meets me at my crib. So then I leave the hospital, I leave Ivy at the hospital, I drive home, I meet up with David. Then I have him, then, then I call my midwife because we need to get donor milk for my daughter. So then my midwife calls around, finds a couple of donors. So then David goes and picks me up some milk. Then my brother finally calls. He's on the way. He stays with my daughter. And then I go back to the hospital. 
And then I come back home. Then I finally get a call from the hospital at like three in the morning. And he's like, hey, so after all the tests that we've done, the only thing that's off is her electrolytes. Her sodium levels are really low. So I'm going to give her an IV with some sodium and see if that does anything. And I'm like, well, oh, okay. And then he calls back like 20 minutes later and it's Ivy's voice on the other line. And she's all out of it, but she's there and she's talking. I was lying mm -hmm. and I'm like, she's sleeping. I'm coming to you now. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, it's crazy because all of that happened because she was fucking depleted, completely sucked out. Like my daughter took everything she had left in her. Yeah. You know, and it's crazy because after we finally got her home from the hospital, um, like maybe 24 hours later, she calls me while I'm like, I don't know, at work or somewhere. She's like, hey, I'm kind of, I'm feeling sick again. Like the mm -hmm. same symptoms that I had when, when this whole episode happened. And so yeah. I'm like panicking. I'm having, like, I'm like, fuck, what are you talking about? You know? And so, um, so then I, uh, so then I, I, what happens? Uh, so I run home and I, and I fry her up some fish and I throw mad salt on it. She yeah. eats it, her headache goes away and her nausea goes away and she goes better. And then like a day later, the same thing. And like a week later, the same thing. And then eventually it, it went away. But it was wow. crazy because every time that she was having these symptoms, like all I had to do was feed her or to go away and every time i fed her because at this point we weren't really eating meat like that yet i was just giving her fish yeah. and and salt and she would and she would snap out of it and she'd feel better and the headache would go away and all that shit, you know and then my whole journey as eating meat and then as soon as i started eating meat she ate meat right along with me and yeah. we both have just been eating meat ever since you know and ivy has never had anything like that happen again to her and my pain has, you know, I'm doing construction again. I remember when the pandemic hit and I came out here to do construction because the whole photography industry had shut down in LA. I mm. was like nervous. I was like, how am I going to do construction when I have all this pain in my body all the time? Yeah. And, and, and nine times out of 10, it hurts my hands and my wrist, you know? And so I'm like, how am I going to swing the hammer again, you know, with all this fucking pain in my body? And yeah. so, um, so yeah, so, so it's crazy. Like, the, the diet has helped both of us a lot, you know? Um, and, uh, and it's just, it's a trip that we, you know, that we were even able to get pregnant. It's a trip that we had a healthy baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm, we're blessed and I'm very thankful to, I don't, I don't necessarily believe in God, but I'm thankful because, you know, I, it's like, if we didn't figure this shit out, like, what would I be feeding my child right now? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, would I be one of these fucking derelict parents feeding my kid and my dog a vegan diet? That's crazy. And so, yeah, it was, it was fucking crazy. No, I mean, like, that is, I'm think. first off, thank you for sharing that, because it was like, I was sitting here like, what happened? Like, because, you know, the storyline, I was just like, this isn't the first time I've heard of, you know, a pregnant woman just being like, because, you know, in our mind, even if you, you know, you're not giving life or, or producing life, it's just like your body, you're so convinced that what you're doing is right. You don't even think to check it. You don't even think to be like, oh, maybe it's the vegan thing. You know, it's just like, well, it's again, it's like you're so, that's what I, you know, the whole dogmatic <laughs> it's like I'm Mr. Oh, I don't necessarily know if I believe in God, but here I am being fucking highly dogmatic about this fucking diet. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it's like when I started flipping the script and, and listening to the other side of the coin and listening to carnivores and, and just mm -hmm. anything that went against what I believed in, you know, it just started to like, I started to feel fucking dumb and naive and, and, and embarrassed and, mm -hmm. and, um, and ashamed and yeah. and scared you know i was like i remember just being like oh my god like how many people have i convinced to eat this way how many people that i that i talk shit about how many people that i diss how many people that i try to dare hop in their fucking dm or whatever and with my self-righteous bullshit with, with what i was eating you know i remember <laughs> I remember one time you know because it's funny one of my friends she was tripping out when she found that i ate meat again because 
in the beginning of our relationship when we were having this conversation and they were asking me about my, my vegetarianism. And I remember just being annoyed that they were even asking me because I was like, what, you don't fucking know? Like, you don't know why I'm being a vegetarian. You don't know that this is better. Like, like, and I remember to the point where I was like, yo, I don't even want to talk about this. Like, if y'all want to be friends, like, let's not even talk about this. Like, like just how crazy, like, like we just, like, you don't realize how fucking crazy you are, you know? <laughs> Insane. And you don't see it, you know, because it's like, first off, you don't have the proper uh, facts in your brain to even think properly. And then you which start is, to, like, go ahead. No, which is why it lasted for so long. <laughs> it's like the longer I was in it, the longer I was most likely not going to make it out of it because I didn't have the, the knowledge and yeah. the juice in here to just fire up and think the right things, you know? Yeah, it's just gone. And so it's just like, I mean, honestly, I don't I don't wish veganism on anybody. That's how, that's how poor of a of a lifestyle, of a diet, I, I, I now see that it is. However, nobody really knows how nutrient-dense meat is until you have been starved from it. You know well, what I mean? that and then the idea that, like, <clears throat> all of the things that you either study or don't study when you're going through either of these diets, like um, terms like, um, you know, um, uh, bioavailability. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, things have nutrients in it. Like, sure, broccoli's got protein in it. So does yeah. beef. Which one can your body absorb? That part. Which one can your body process properly? Which one isn't going to harm your body? Like, all mm -hmm. of these things that, like, you just take for granted. You know, you start, you start comparing yourselves to animals that you're not. Oh, look at yeah. the gorilla. Look at the gorilla. Ooh, look how big and strong the gorilla is. Look how big and strong the cow is. Like, yeah, the cow has four stomachs. The cow mm -hmm. has four stomachs that are that that come before uh right that come where does it go it goes because their whole digestive system is totally different than ours and we don't fucking consider that and it's like yeah. we have our food goes into our stomach first and then into our intestines but with cows it's like it goes into like their intestines first and then into their four different stomachs that we don't have and guess yeah. what motherfuckers it's like the cows aren't even eating those greens it's the fucking yeah. microbes in their stomach exactly you know what i'm saying so it's like it's just it's so much deeper than that. And it's like, you're just so blinded because how are you going to learn if you're not listening? You're like, not. like if you're so fucking caught up in your own shit, mm -hmm. you know, like how are you going to fucking learn if you're not listening? Um, I don't know if my sister Sarah Jean is in here. She is at the moment. What's up, Sarah? Um, Sarah, I'm about to talk about you. Please don't be offended. Please don't get mad at me. I love mm -hmm. you. Um, we love you, Sarah. <laughs> so my sister is a vegan and um and she is i believe an ethical vegan um and um um she's also chronically ill <clears throat> and uh and it's hard to watch her struggle with her sickness knowing what I think I know. And I say what I think I know because I've been wrong before. And I'm aware of the fact that I've been extremely wrong before. Mm -hmm. And it sucks having been so wrong before because what ground do I have to stand on now, right? Mm -hmm. But Same. it doesn't take away how much I love you. And it doesn't take away the fact that I worry about you. And, mm -hmm. and it sucks because it's like, you you feel how you feel you know what you know i know what i know she knows what she knows we all know what we know yeah. that's all we know is what we know mm -hmm. i can't put a bunch of shit in your head right now especially if you don't want to hear it right or especially if you're not whatever and so mm -hmm. it, it sucks because it's like yeah like she's a vegan and she's highly sick all the time she's very ill and and she does not believe that her diet's attributing to this at all and nothing that I say do would ever convince her otherwise. The same way, if I wasn't in pain, mm -hmm. like when I was 37 and I was still dancing every day, no mm -hmm. one could tell me shit. Same. You, you try to come at me with, oh, veganism is stupid or whatever, like you're not healthy. And then I do a hand spin in your face and I'm like, what can you do? Yeah. Exactly. Right? I'm like, oh, I'll show you what I can do as a vegan. And, and, and now there's nothing you can do. And it's sad because, you know, some people, can be vegan probably for a lifetime and actually not ever have any negative symptoms. But it doesn't mean that they're thriving. It doesn't mean yeah. that they're fucking 
that they're that they're killing it and it's kind of like you said which kind of like was something like kind of profound for me which i never thought about was was how can you test it if you're not actually a physical person you know yeah, yeah and, and, I, and i can actually speak on that now because i have the hindsight right yeah <laughs> so as a dancer this is fucking crazy right so as, as a dancer it really blew my mind because i i was like a, i'm a diehard hip-hopper b-boy okay. like you know, my whole fucking ego, my whole persona was built up in my B-Boy Imagine name, you know, um, and, uh, you know, like half of my following is, 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 is B-Boys and hip hoppers. And, um, and uh, where was I going with this? Um, we were talking about physical. Oh, right, right, right. So, so, right. So, so throughout all the years of me dancing, you know, the, the level of my dance was very, I, I came up in the game very slowly, very gradually, very organically, very naturally. And, um, but as I got older and more into it and more competitive um, and more of my friends got more competitive and, and then you get down with the crew and you are really trying to live this lifestyle, um, you know, um, I could not keep up with my peers. Mm -hmm. And when I say I was dancing with the best in the world, I was dancing with the best in the world. I was training alongside the motherfuckers that win all the competitions, the motherfuckers mm -hmm. that everybody else looks up to. I'm mm -hmm. training right alongside them for just as many hours. And the only difference is that I can't fucking recover as fast as they can and that I can't build any strength on what I did the day before. Like, mm -hmm. no matter how much I dance, no matter how many push-ups I did, no matter how many mm -hmm. crunches or bicycles or calisthenics or whatever, no matter how many hours I practice, I still weigh 155. I could never gain a pound of muscle. Yeah. Never get stronger, never get faster, never get more snappy, never, never, none of that. And, um, and so, it's crazy because you know one of the things that that I noticed as a dancer was that I would gas out before everybody else. Like not yeah. only would I not recover well, like so for instance, like if I was going to train with my friends, right, we might we might start off with like um, th this freeze game called add on, where you just do a bunch of freezes, and then after that we would do some some. Uh, th then we would just go into practice and we would just dance for like, you know, I don't know, two hours straight, and then after we're done dancing, we're sweating. Then we would do like, you know, push-ups and crunches mm -hmm. and bicycles and all that stuff. And then we'd be done. And then they'd be like, they'd go home. I'd stay home. Maybe we practice at my house. I'd stay home. They'd go back to their house. And then like, you know, hours later, they'd hit you up like, yo, we're going to the club tonight to get down. And I'd be like, after what we did today, like, <laughs> you're trying to go to the club right now? Like, I can barely move my arms. Like, I could, now mind you, they probably went home and had dinner, mm -hmm. chilled out, watched a movie. And now it's time to go to the club. And they feel fine. Yeah. And I probably had dinner or cereal, right? Or something mm -hmm. vegan, something right? Vegan. Something vegan. Mm -hmm. And my body was not, rec like, my, my muscles weren't healing fast enough. And by the yeah. time it was time to ready to go to the club, I'm like, eh, I'm chill. I'm going to just chill on the couch. And, and then by the next day, I'd feel, I'd be, like, after I get some sleep, I'd feel fine. But I couldn't. And then, like, if I was competing in a competition, and, and we dare to make it to the final battle, I'm the one gassing out. I'm the one who can't execute in the final round. Because why? Not because I haven't trained hard enough, not because I'm not good enough, not because I'm not any of those things. Because I'm nutrient deficient and my body has no energy left. Yeah. I'm spent. And I see it in so many vegan dancers or vegetarian dancers. It's really, um, so in biomechanics, like I said, we, we look at like fascia, which is like the muscle tissues, and we're looking at hydration as well. So oftentimes what I notice as a trainer, and I've had, I had a few vegan clients, my clients, I did not make them vegan, but the ones who were vegan, I, you know, I catered to that. And the ones who were not, I just had them following like just a, what I call it, a clean diet in a way where it's just like, you know, um, lamb and fish and things like that, just, um, at just a balance, more of a balanced diet and whatnot. Because I trained a lot of high level uh, pro athletes as well. Okay. And they could not be vegan because they didn't have the energy when they were on a vegan diet. And so they could not because it physically would not allow for them to be mm -hmm. vegan. And uh, what I've noticed biomechanically in the in my vegan clients was that their bones and their fascia, their muscle, it would just it would be like dry. And so it's like when you're looking at somebody's fascia, when you're looking at somebody's gait cycle, them running in space or even walking 
it looked like a sack of rocks just hitting the ground rather than a buoyant flow. It just looked like bow, bow, bow. It's just jarring. Everything just looks dry and hard. Um, and they always complained about indigestion and, and their skin was always kind of like, it just looked like, if you, if you look at a baby's skin and you look at like an older person's skin, the vegans would look like the older person and then the people who ate meat would look more like the baby. Right. And so that's just like that hydrated tissue shows that like you're not getting any nutrition and your body isn't even able to use what you are getting to help your biomechanics and a lot of people don't understand that biomechanics and your mental are the same thing because you can't move where you can't think you can't think where you can't move they both go hand in hand right you know right no and it makes sense because it's also like now from what i think i understand about nutrition now yeah. and what i think i understand about fats um, and collagen and connective tissues and all of those amazing things, you know. Um, yeah, it's like, you know, I, you know, it's crazy because they talk about like the, the brain fog that you get as a vegan. I don't know if you know about like the depression or the anxiety, yep. the dyslexia, dyspraxia, mm -hmm. schizophrenia, um, yeah. all of these things that are caused from depriving yourself of the nutrients that we need. It's crazy because right toward the like, it was like right at the at the end of my pain. Um, I was talking to my brother, and my brother he uh, he's seen a therapist off and on since he was like eighteen, and um, at one time or another he's been on antidepressants or some sort of mood altering drug. Uh, not not like for forever, but I don't I don't really know when that started, but he's definitely done it for a number of years here and there. Um, and I remember when I was talking to him about his experience with Zoloft um, and him and he, him telling me uh, what the therapist, like how the therapist convinced him to do it. She basically was like, look, like um, this is going to cor correct an imbalance in you. And if you're if you are balanced, you won't even feel it. But if you are imbalanced, it'll correct it and then you'll notice it. And then you can just tell me how you feel, whether you like it or not. And so he was like, all right, cool, I'll try it. Uh, so about a week into it. Uh, if I remember the story correctly, um, he said something like <clears throat> he woke up in the morning and he had breakfast. And then he did whatever he did. And then when it was like lunchtime and he's sitting down for his lunch, he realized that he had, had breakfast. Mm. And he realized that he had breakfast the day before too. And then he, and then it hit him that it was working because he was mm. like, he's, he's, it's very normal in my family for like my dad or me to skip breakfast and it's because of yeah. all the anxiety we have when we wake up yeah. and we wake up with all this angst and all this all this tight stomach energy where it's very easy for us to just like grab our coffee and go you yeah. know and just go to work or whatever or just skip it all together until we're feeling more normal later on in the day and we feel kind of like acclimated to our day that's when our appetite kind of kicks in not realizing that that's what that actually is. At the time, I just was skipping breakfast. I didn't know that they had anxiety or anything like that. But he, as he's telling me the story, I'm like, my mind's kind of being blown. And I'm like, oh, shit, is that why we don't eat breakfast? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, and he goes, and he also noticed something about when he sleeps, his hands are like this when he sleeps, and, and, and they weren't. They were, like, they were like this, you know? And, um, and so he was like, I, I, I started sleeping without clenching my hand. Mm. And so um, he started talking about things like post-traumatic stress. And he was like, look, if you look up what PTSD is, you'll realize that you have it, that I have it, that Sarah Jean has it, and, and that Bianca has it, that we all have, all of our siblings have PTSD from our upbringing. And, and he starts talking about like all the symptoms and the things that, you know, the, how it affects us as an adult. And so, um, so anyway, so while he's telling me about Zoloft, I remember thinking like, he also mentioned smoking trees and he said, when I'm on Zola, I can smoke as much tree as I want and it won't affect me the way it does when I'm not on Zola. And I go, well, what do you mean? And he goes, you know the roller coaster ride you get, how you smoke and then you start to get high and you kind of hit like a peak and then, and then you settle down and you chill out for the rest of the time, right? And I'm like, yeah, he's like, I don't get that anymore. Now I just get high and I'm chilling the whole time. There's no, there's no weird roller coaster peak of anxiety because that's what that peak is. It's just you having this anxiety until you finally get used to what's happening and then you cool out, you know? And he's oh, like, wow. because I'm on my Zola that I'm not having any of these anxiety issues. Now when I get high, there's no anxiety, so I don't have any stress. The weed's actually doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to just mellow you out. 
you know? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, really? Like, because I can't do that. I can't just smoke blunt yeah. after blunt. If I, if I smoke a blunt to my head, I'm fucked up, you know? Like, yeah. so, <laughs> and, and I'm definitely going to have this roller coaster ride of, of whatever. So, um, so, you know, him telling me all that, uh, like, kind of stuck with me. But then also, because I was in all this pain, and it had been like two years that I was in pain for at this point, and I haven't been able to shake the pain yet. So it's literally just been two years of consistent, gnarly pain. I also started to slip into depression because I wasn't sure if this was going to be my life. And yeah. I had never been depressed in my life as far as I know. I've had anxiety, but I've never been depressed. And so, and I remember catching myself like crying a lot, feeling emotional a lot, um, feeling kind of crazy a lot. Uh, and not knowing that any of that had to do with what the fuck I wasn't eating. Yeah. And so then when I started eating, all that shit went away and it went away quickly. Like it was yeah. like, it went away so quickly. And now it's like, it's crazy because like if I have inflammation in my body, like right now I have inflammation in my body. My, my left wrist hurts a lot today and my, my, my both my hands hurt basically. And, um, and it's interesting because depending on how bad my inflammation is, I noticed that it's not just affecting my physical body. It's affecting my whole fucking mood. Like yep. I'm grouchier, I'm edgier, I'm more disgruntled and ornery. I'm, I'm just like, you know, like I'm just not right. And it's because like that shit that I ate that's causing the inflammation, it's causing the inflammation, motherfucker. It's not just in your hands, it's in your fucking brain. Yeah. It's probably okay. somewhere else. It's just brewing, bro, you know, like it's just all yeah. up in there. Yeah, no, and, and that's um that's something that we that, that's something that I, I would target in uh, biomechanics too, and this is really what allowed me to be able to see how damaging veganism, you know, is is because I have the experience as a trainer, and I got to test it, not just eat and be like, oh, I'm doing X, Y, and Z, um, and, and so what I noticed too, in order for me to like balance my hormones and get myself because my blood sugar was so unstable when I when I was no longer vegan, I mean I would shake because I was eating sugar in the morning. I would eat fruits or whatever. And it's like, I, I realized that I had to have protein within the first two hours of being up in order for my blood sugar to become stable. And then my, and then the endocrine system to work and my hormones to be stable. And when I started doing that, and then obviously when you're eating protein and proper fats, you're not right. starving. Right. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just changed everything for me. So, I mean, <clears throat> people really, and, and I was depressed. What, like towards the last, I'm gonna say two weeks of veganism, my joints was hurting. I could barely move my head off the off the bed. I literally had to like stop training because I could not get up and go to work. Like I just couldn't do it. So um, I was I was super depressed. I mean, I literally looked in the mirror. I was just like, "You're going to die." And that was the day when I took the picture of the back of my head and saw that my hair was falling out. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? And, and so it was just like I, I felt that though. And you're right, as soon as I ate meat again, it was just like, all of it went away. And it, it sounds like, I'm not trying to say no, meat is like I, this wonderful pill, but no, it's, you know, you've been there. Like It's crazy. It it's, 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 you know, it's crazy because it's for me, it's not, you know, there's definitely two sides of the coin. It wasn't for me, it wasn't just, oh, I ate meat and all of a sudden everything went away. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's not what happened. What happened was I stopped eating what was poisoning me. Yes. Like yep. the real truth to the matter, when I really think of it right now is the meat didn't heal me. It still hasn't healed me. The only time I feel good is when I'm not putting the poison in my body. Yes, that part. Okay, like now what's crazy is because of the fact that I developed this autoimmune issue while being vegetarian, vegan for all those years and eating too many fucking sweets and pastries for your own good. Um, because of all of that, and, and now that I'm in this boat that I'm in, this sinking ship, you know, um, and I'm having to constantly scoop the water out of it to, to stay afloat, you know, um, fuck, lost my train of thought. Um, you were saying meat doesn't heal you? Not yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, again, like it, it, eating the animals, I, I, you know, I wish I could dance right now because I want to see me perform on the right diet now i want to yeah. i'm curious if i can be better than i've ever been even after taking four years off you know what i mean and it's it and it's fucking frustrating that i'm still dealing with this fucking food addiction 
and that I can't fucking just say no. Just, I mean, it's like just the fucking drug slogan, right? Just say no, but it shouldn't be about fucking drugs. It should be about the goddamn shit that you keep putting in your body. All the goddamn right. grains and all the breads and all the fucking breads and all the grains and all the carbs and all the carbs. And it's crazy because it's like if you're a vegan, like, they don't realize that it's like you, everything, like, everything outside of the greens and the, the so-called nutrient-dense foods that you're eating is a filler. Your yeah. rice, filler. Your bread, filler. Your pasta, filler. Like, okay. and so it's like, yeah. Like, so for me, it really it? wasn't about, it wasn't yeah. about eating the animals. It was, it was really about me. It's about me not eating the crap. Yeah, that's exactly. me feel good. Yeah. And, and I think that's the most important thing is like when I no longer was vegan, I really honestly, I just went back on my dad's side. Um, I'm Geechee, you know, my mother's side, I'm Cuban. And I really just went back to what I was, what I grew up eating, which was just proper food. I mean, we always grew up food and we fished and hunt and things like that. So I just went back to that and it literally just began healing me. And I think a lot of the, I can, I can definitely agree with you on the frustration because I still, it's only been a year and a half, almost two years, I think in January that I have been clean, so to speak, off the veganism thing. However, I'm still dealing with certain things. You know, you, the amount of time that you were vegan, you still have to give yourself that time to to heal again because okay. it's just like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you've been, you, you were depleting yourself for so long and it's like, I want it so bad within a year to just be good again, but that's not how it works. And, you know, we have to be patient with ourselves and stuff like that, but it is very frustrating. And that's why I do this because it's like, if we can help other people see some form of light that what they're experiencing, if we say something and it, you know, it, it catches them and it helps them, like maybe you won't be so, so a vegan for so long to where totally. you do so much damage to yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's you know, when you posted this, uh, posted asking anybody to tell a story, it was, one of the only reasons why I wanted to tell my story was just to, because I know how affected I was by everybody else's story. Yeah. It, it was because of all those ex-vegan testimonials that gave me chills that was like, oh shit, what did I do? You know, yeah. and, and this can't be true. Like literally I was in disbelief, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, so yeah, I was just, you know, I, that, that and I think I just wanted to hear it out loud, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I've, I know I've told a million people my story because all my friends were very curious, like, what the fuck's going on? Why are you eating? <laughs> or why are you not dancing? You know, so I, I had, like, a lot of explaining to do. Um, but, yeah, like, if, um, if, if, if anybody can leave, you know, hearing any of these stories and it helps them in any way, then, then that's a good thing, you know? Yeah. You know, it's interesting, too, you talk about the food addiction. I I cannot even have, like, any gluten now. Like, I can't, honestly, it, I can't even have bread because it, I will literally break out in hives. Like, I can't even. Um, yeah, it's like my hives are on the inside and they cause pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, and it happens at night. For some reason, like, if I, I'll have it, if, if I have it, even in the morning, it won't happen until at night. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes sense, though. Like, I, I'm, I totally understand why I was in pain at night all the time. And it's because you eat during the day. Yep. Hello. And it takes time for your body to go what yeah. the fuck you put in me, right? And then <laughs> what happens at nighttime? You fast. Yep. And so then it gives you time for it to get out of there. So every day as the sun's rising, the pain slowly starts subsiding. And then I start mm -hmm. poisoning myself again, slowly. Yeah. <laughs> they come yeah. at nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> wow you, you know? know yeah no that's real that's real and i'm really glad too i'm gonna be sure i put that in the title when i upload this on youtube is about the food addiction because um that's something that a lot of people don't talk about and it is something that i think was the hardest thing really was just for me to not because you know when you're vegan you don't become satiated so it's like 30 minutes later no matter how big the meal was you're you're, you're, you're fucking starving yeah like yeah, you're shitting you're time like a fucking like it's so funny because i tell people i'm like i'm like oh you're a vegan yeah that means you poop like you're a cow yeah well that means you poop like a horse like you're just pooping and farting all the time <laughs> all the time all day and not even and not even digesting it like they no nope. you know it's I mean? crazy like i used to tell people and it was like one of my like it was like ammunition for my vegan bullshit i'm regular <laughs> I would be yeah. like, yo, by by noon, I've already shit three times. 
And somehow I thought that that was normal and okay. And yeah. I thought that not only was it normal and okay, but that that's best. That, yeah. that shitting three times is best. Meanwhile, now when I eat animals, like my poops are solid all the time unless I'm sick. Like mm -hmm. all the time, right? Especially when mm -hmm. I'm eating my soups and I'm, and I'm making my soups and I'm on my soup game and all that. Like it's a wrap, mm -hmm. like, and they're smaller. Yeah, isn't and that crazy? Like, oh, because we're absorbing. Because I'm absorbing, <laughs> and I can actually absorb and use all of these things that I'm putting in my body. My body can, is actually going. Oh, I can use this. Put it there. Oh, I can put yeah. that there. Let me give that to your knee. Let me give this to your wrist. Like all your joints that have been starved for twenty fucking years. Like let me go feed these things finally. Yeah, and oh no, not that much is coming out because you used it all. Like oh wow. Very true. Yeah. Hey, I'm I want to say this last thing before I ask you this uh, yep. last question. When I was, even though I was vegan, when I had my dog, I would feed my dog a raw meat diet. And what I noticed was, and the reason why I switched was because I was feeding him, um, I forget if it was purine or something like that, or eyes, but I was feeding him some uh, dry food mm -hmm. and it was a recall. <laughs> and um, it actually made him sick. He was like throwing up blood and stuff like that. And I was like, man, that made me go online and look and see like, what should he be eating and things like that. And, you know, I got into, like, the whole primal diet for, for dogs. And yep. they were just, like, giving raw food and organ meats and stuff like that. So I developed a relationship with a halal um, butcher up the street. And okay. I would just go and get him the meat and things like that. What I noticed was when he was eating the dry food, he would have these long, like, you know, uh, defecations or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when he went to the meat, it was drier and it was less. Mm -hmm. His coat was a lot. It was beautiful. It was so much better. He didn't have the skin issues. His breath didn't stink. His teeth was whiter. Like it was just so many plus that mm -hmm. happened. I was like, no, man. We watched said, I... me and my wife. We, we watched a, a documentary called Pet Food. Okay. And it's like about the pet food industry. So it's just mm. a play on that, you know. So it's pet food, mm -hmm. and uh, and basically they promoted the raw diet in this in this documentary talking about dogs are ninety eight point whatever percent wolf, and yeah. and what do wolves eat? Do you ever see a wolf eat a potato or a grain of rice or anything other than raw flesh? You know, and mm -hmm. um, and so after watching that documentary, I was like, oh shit, like. I'm giving y'all motherfuckers raw meat, you know, like, <clears throat> and so, yeah, that's what I did. And, um, and yeah, like the only thing that I really noticed, my dog, the Pomeranians are really small, um, was that they one loved their diet. Mm -hmm. Like they just wanted to eat it and fast mm -hmm. and their poops were smaller and more solid mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. these weird long things that you described. Right. Yeah. 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 And it's funny now because, um, one of them isn't with us anymore. We still have Luna Bear and she's not, she's on a kibble diet and I do give her raw food all the time. Um, and then like on the night that I make my soup, she like loves those nights because when I'm pulling all the meat off the carcass, she's just like getting all the good, you know, like yeah. I'm just hooking her up. And so um, it's weird. It's only because she's so small that I'm a little bit more apprehensive about going completely raw because he's not natural anyway like Pomeranian should have fucking exist you know um, if he was a much larger dog more natural looking I think I'd be more inclined to do it full out but because she's not and then when we lost our other dog we, we didn't know how or what caused her to die so much so we weren't sure if any of the raw diet caused any of that you know um, so right now it's, like, it's more of a mix but she's definitely happier and healthier because of it yeah well, I, I I mean, it was just interesting to me because I learned so much more about how um, nutrient dense organ meats was, yep. and I just saw the difference in like his his overall health, and I was just like, wow, okay. And so when I went back to meat, I was it just all started clicking for me, and I was just like, oh snap, like this is what I was seeing with with my dog, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, like I, I see it like within myself is just like being able to digest your food better and not mm -hmm. having. I mean, it was just terrible. My digestion was so bad. Like, once I started being vegan, it was just so bad. But Well, it's um, crazy when you talk about, like, how you notice it in your dog, and then you did it, the experience, same experience to yourself, and you noticed it. It's like, you know, I remember I was vegetarian or vegan at this point, but I used to grow marijuana for a living. And, um, and we were having trouble 
hitting the numbers that we needed to get, you know? We were trying to get a certain amount of weight and we couldn't get that the first couple of rounds. And, um, and it was because of the water system. Uh, mm -hmm. When we first were feeding them, we weren't filtering the water. And then mm -hmm. we had, you know, checked everything else, the lights and the nutrients and the stat and the other thing, and we still weren't getting great results. So finally we were like, all right, let's, you know, let, let's, let's mess with the water, see what, how that's looking. So we tested the water, it was pretty dirty. So then we got like a reverse osmosis filter, cleaned the water, and then doubled our numbers. And I remember <laughs> thinking like, wait a second. You're right. <laughs> we just doubled our numbers from just having clean water. And I'm like, what does that mean for us? Yes. Like if this grew twice as big, twice as healthy, twice as heavy from just changing the water i was like like you know even then like you you would think the light bulb would really go off for everything else that was going on with me but no like it was at that point it was just oh maybe i need to eat cleaner water you know like <laughs> yeah 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 of course no i mean i get that um it, it makes sense it's, it's amazing how you see those correlations and, and in hindsight obviously it's always 2020 but you know what i mean it's just mm -hmm. like i'm glad you saw that um i want to ask you this um last question yeah. though like what do you, what would you like to say to anybody who is um, currently vegan and experiencing issues on a vegan diet? Um, all I would say to you vegans out there is um, as much as you wholeheartedly believe in what you're doing is right, and I vibe with you on that because I did it and I believed in it. And idealistically, it sounds so great and pretty. So I get it I'm with you. But I, I suggest all of you vegans out there and vegetarians for that matter, um, that you, if, if you're doing it because you believe what you're doing is the right thing and the healthy thing, all I ask is that while you're reading all of your vegan and vegetarian memes, and while you're reading the few vegetarian and vegan books that are out there, read a few other books that don't align with what you believe in. Don't be afraid to take in information that doesn't align with your set of beliefs. Because that's being dogmatic. Because yeah. that's being religious about what you believe, you know? You know, I don't know, learn about Western Price. Um, yes, Western A. Price, definitely. Nutrition and read, physical consideration. Read, read any of Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride's books. She mm -hmm. just put a new one out, Vegetarian Explained. Um, okay. That's something people, vegetarians, should read. Um, yeah, I, I would just say just don't be closed-minded. That's really what it comes down to, because that's what I was. I was closed-minded, and I didn't listen to anything unless it fit my what's the confirmation bias right mm -hmm. like that that's what i did for 20 years and so um yeah that's that's my advice to vegans and vegetarians just you know i agree and i was that way too and um at some point you just get tired of that shit i was i would um also like to say that you know if you are because i was on my last leg literally you know i felt though the spirit like hit i felt my spirit sit back in my body when i ate meat for the first time after six years and i'm just gonna say that like if you were on your last leg too like don't like fuck it eat some meat just see you know what i mean just see that's you know <laughs> it's so funny because like that's the conversation i had with myself i remember saying like bro adam it's not gonna kill you just like, yeah. so what? You went so many years without doing it. Like, break it, mm -hmm. oopsie do, for yeah. a couple of days, go on an elimination diet and just see. Like, just yeah. see. You could always go back to being vegan for another 20 fucking years. You got a long life to live. Like, let's go. You know? Yeah. Like, and it's, and that's, that's what I mean. Like, just don't be afraid to read that book that goes completely against what you believe in. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. to talk to somebody who is completely opposite of you, who believes in the exact opposite. And get, and don't, and don't be offended and just just share and mm -hmm. be open to the conversation because you never fucking know what what you're going to learn you know yeah. and yeah. it's like you know and again like at the end of the day i'm not mad at the vegans because to me they're going to make the best knowledge people like they're going to make the most sense later when they're yeah. explaining why it didn't work you know it's like you said like you don't 
until you go until you flip flop both ways like mm -hmm. you don't have the hindsight you know so for all of those who have experimented with their health like they're they're the ones who i want to listen to you know yep. even like the vegans who are still doing it i'm still listening to you guys and mm -hmm. i'm still curious how you're doing it you know like yeah. or if you're doing it or if you're cheating you know i you know like like you know uh, what's that one anetta larkin yeah <laughs> like but like that's been one that i've always been like but what about her but, yeah. but she's probably still doing it <laughs> Yeah, I heard some. I heard something. To, I, I don't have to tell you the show, but um, <laughs> but I just want to say I I appreciate you, Adam, for coming on for sharing your story. You really like touched on some really um heartfelt moments that I feel like we needed to hear. You know, from a different perspective, someone who was vegetarian, vegan for twenty years, like that's so that's so different than my six years or you know ten, eleven years, fifteen years. It's just so different. Mm -hmm. You had such a a greater uh, time to be able to experience certain things and test things out. And um, I'm really thankful for you sharing. Cause I know you were like, even when you messaged me, you were like, I wasn't going to do this stuff, but. <laughs> well, I, 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 I hate yeah. being interviewed and I always like, I get nervous and I feel uh, very self-conscious. It's okay. Yeah. So I was <laughs> no, like, but, but again, like this was, this was something more important. This wasn't like some mm -hmm. interview about me dancing or about my photography or whatever. I was like, no, this is a little bit, this is something that I'm, much more passionate about now like all i i got i can listen to like uh nutritional podcasts literally all fucking day when i'm at work because i just yeah. find that information so fascinating now so mm -hmm. to have this conversation was much easier than others all right yeah no of course uh, so everyone i will keep this up for a while uh, normally what i do is i keep it up for like maybe 24 hours and then i upload it to youtube and so it'll be on youtube so you can and i'll save the link cool. so you can um take it or you know yep. shout out to everybody sure um, um, however, it'll stay on YouTube. I just keep it on my IG for a while and then I take it down. So don't worry. It'll be on YouTube, everyone. Um, thank you for coming on, sharing course, your story. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And let everybody know, um, where they can find you if they're looking to, uh, you know, look into, uh, I'm on Instagram people. right here. That's it. I'm not on Facebook or anything else. I don't have a, what is your, um, uh, what is your tag? Um, well, I have while you, uh, while you sleep is one of them. Um, I'm sorry, no, while you dream. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, babe. Uh, while you dream, Adam shoots hair and Adam Adolphus. Adam Adolphus. Yeah, All right. I have three Instagram pages. <laughs> All good, no yeah. problem. All right, well, thank you so much for sharing, for coming on. And um, I will be seeing you, I guess, in the lives and on IG, and then I will see you the link. So Sounds good. Yep, thank you. Talk to you yeah. next time. Peace. Okay.